Oh, fuck. So for a little while now, I have been really diving deep into my cinematography skills. That's reading, researching, talking to my teachers, doing practice shots, doing everything I can to really improve my cinematography skills. And there are a few techniques that I have learned and a lot of them include lighting. With that being said, these skills have really helped my cinematography level and I want to share that with you. Hi, my name is Parker and welcome to Porker 13 and here are three different lighting techniques that will improve your cinematography level. Now there's a lot of different lighting techniques out there to improve your cinematography, but these three I have found extremely useful. Now this first technique is extremely simple, but can be done to make your shots look immensely better. I use this quite often and it probably is out of these three my favorite te lighting technique. This technique being the checkerboard lighting technique. Now the checkerboard lighting technique is when you go from dark to light, dark to light, like a checkerboard effect. Now I'm actually using this technique in this video. As you can see, we got light, we got a dark background, half of my face is light, the other half is dark, we got some light right here, some more darkness right there, and then light again to make that checkerboard effect, which really makes your video pop, especially when it's done very subtle. A good example of this is actually in one of the final few scenes in No Country for Old Men, which was actually DP'd by Roger Deakins. Now this technique can take a little while to pull off and it definitely needs some practice, but it can be easily done in almost any shot of yours. I personally really love this technique. It has helped me immensely make my shots look a lot better for classes or for personal projects. And I highly recommend keeping your eye out in your scenes to try to practice this technique because it really will make your shots look a lot better. Like I said, I use this technique quite often and I'm always trying to keep my eyes open to see if I can practice this in any shot I do. That will actually move us to the next technique, which is upstage lighting. Upstage lighting is when you put the subject in between the lighting and the camera. An amazing example of this is seen in Star Wars Solo with the cinematographer Bradford Young. He uses this quite often in the film and it looks just amazing. It looks fantastic and I think it is a great way to get a moody and deep tone and with the warmer colors that Bradford Young kind of plays with in Solo it stands out it just it really does stand out. Upstage lighting kind of makes this silhouette look and when done right it can just be an extremely emotional shot and it just makes it stand out from every other shot. It is extremely cool looking and I gotta say I wish I did it more because of how well it looks. It's a great way to get a silhouette effect while also telling a story. Now I kind of glazed over upstage lighting pretty quick but that's because it's extremely simple and it's extremely simple to do. All you need is one light, a subject, and a camera and then that's it. It's and it, it, it's, it's pretty much just silhouette lighting, but in a different aspect. But with that being said, we're now gonna talk about the third and final lighting technique, and that is practical lighting. Practical lighting can make or break a scene. Practical lighting is a great way to kind of show evidence that you have where the light is coming from that you even have light on set i actually used it on set with some friends of mine for a short film that we're making and we used lights up in the ceiling and we shined a small rig light at it so it would amplify the the lighting towards the subject to make it look like the one the lights are more powerful um, you'd get that separation on the subject's head and it just made it look like there was light coming from the actual lights in the ceiling. It almost, it, 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 it's not almost, it gave evidence why there is light in the first place. The camera died. Usually this is called motivational lighting, but you can call it motivational lighting, practical lighting, lamp. It doesn't really matter as long as it proves that there is a source for the light that is hitting the subject. A lot of times you want to amplify this. So what we did in one of our shoots is we had a bunch of candles next to somebody and we wanted to amplify the light that was hitting the subject's face from the candles. So we took a Godox light, put it on candle setting and we put it off screen to the side right next to the candles. So it would hit the subject's face, making it look like it was a realistic candle like glow on his face while also providing a 
reason where the light was coming, which was the candles. A great movie example with all these practical lightings, which is a lot of movies, but it was done exceptionally well in The Social Network. I would highly recommend watching that movie. I haven't seen it, but there's a ton of scenes in it where they use a lot of practical lighting and it just, they do it right. And I have to applause them for that. Now, again, there are tons and tons and tons and tons, and we can go on forever on how many lighting techniques are that will improve your cinematography skills, and that's just for lighting. But, I, like I said before, these three I find extremely simple that will really make your cinematography levels increase. Thank you for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. We have a Discord so you can talk. If you have any questions, you can put them there as well. Otherwise, I have social media where you can ask me questions or see what I'm doing up to date. Again, thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it and I appreciate your time. Peace. Uh.